Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought we'd talk about scopes for different personas. Now we're going to go through several of these recommended telescopes based upon who you are. These are going to include the Cover All Your Bases guy, the student, the astrophotographer, the One Scope collection, the guy who's too cool for the room, the Luddite, and the Budget Three Scope collection. So let's take a look. So the first persona is the cover all your bases guy. This guy wants a scope for every possible occasion, even if they don't ever arise. So we're going to build the collection around an all-purpose Schmidt Cassegrain, and I'm going to choose for you a Celestron C9 and a quarter on a C Gem 2 mount. 9 and a quarter, of course, is my favorite Schmidt Cassegrain of all time. I've talked about it many times here before. It'll do just about everything. You can do deep sky, you can do planetary, you can do double star work, and it's also the right focal length if you want to do webcam, planetary, and lunar imaging. So I could have picked a slightly less expensive mount for it. You can put it on an AVX, and I know they sell it that way, but I think long-term you're going to be happier on the CGEM because it is a little bit more robust. So for the light bucket, I'm going to pick for you an Obsession 15-inch UC. I did a complete review on this product not long ago. You can find it down below. And, you know, there are several telescopes I could find to pick for you in this category, but really the Obsession is my favorite of the bunch. Yes, it's not cheap, but you only have to buy it once, and then you'll have it for the rest of your life. And finally, you're never going to cover all your bases unless you have a good refractor. And I'm going to choose for you an Explore Scientific ED-102. Fantastic value in a 4-inch class APO. Really, there's a lot of choices out there, but I like the Explore Scientific, and you don't need to buy a mount for it because we already have the CGM2 underneath the C9 and a quarter, so you can swap out. And if you want to do astrophotography, you're all set because the refractor is going to be there for deep sky, and the schmidt cast screen is going to be there for webcam lunar planetary imaging. So the next persona is the student. And the stereotypical student is somebody who doesn't have a lot of money and who needs something portable in case he has to pack up and move at a moment's notice. And really, at this category, it's the easiest thing to choose. I'm going to pick for you an Orion Star Blast. I've talked about this telescope so many times before. It really is the best thing at its price point. So I do have to point out that in the couple of years or so since I've been doing this, the telescope market has really changed. I think the scope market has changed more in the last 12 months than I've seen it change in the past 15 years. Models that I thought would be around forever are starting to go away and prices have gone up. So the Star Blast price has gone up. You used to be able to get these for under $200. I think as of filming right now, they're around $275 to $300. Still a really good bargain. And this is by far the cheapest telescope that you're going to see in this entire survey. So at this range, you really want to be careful not to be down in that department store junk scope category. You really need to elevate yourself above that. You know, stay away from the Astromasters, the Power Seekers, and all the equivalents. This is really the lowest cost telescope that I recommend. You'll see one over here over my shoulder here, but I've talked about it several times before. Really not going to go wrong at this price point. So let's say you're a different kind of student. Let's say you're a wealthy student. Well, you're still probably going to need something portable in case you have to move it from one place to the other. But in this case, we can afford something a little bit better. And I'm going to choose for you a Teleview 85, a premium Apple refractor, and I'm going to put it on Teleview's own panoramic mount. So again, you're going to be spending a lot of money here, but you're getting a high quality piece of equipment, Teleview pedigree, and if you go to your preppy star party, it's not going to embarrass you. So the next persona is the astrophotographer. And these people really are a breed apart, don't they? They start talking and most of us have no idea what they're talking about. This even happened to me recently. We had a star party at our dark sky observing site among several astrophotographers. And I sat there and listened to these people. And I have to tell you, I followed a little bit what they were saying for a while. But after a few minutes, I had no idea what they were talking about. So when we get into astrophotography equipment, I'm going to pick for you something that's kind of a little bit higher up on the quality scale. And the reason being that if you start off with something basic, astrophotographers are always on this upgrade merry-go-round. So I'm going to pick for you something here that's already on a pretty good quality level. You're not going to think too much about upgrading it in the near future. 
and the scope that I'm going to pick for you is Takahashi's venerable FSQ-106, a terrific astrograph that can also be used visually. And underneath it, well, astrophotography, as you may know, begins with the mount. It's the one thing you must master before you move on to anything else. And yeah, I could have picked an EM200, but you know, it's kind of expensive and it's a little bit on the exotic side. There aren't very many of them out there. I'm going to pick something for you that's a little bit more common, and that would be the Lozmandy G11G. It's a couple of thousand dollars less than the Takahashi, but it is so common. There are so many of them out there. If you have any issues or questions or comments, somebody on is going to be able to help you. Just keep in mind, once you buy the optical tube and the mount, if you're just getting started, you have a long way to go. You've just started spending money. You've got to buy auto guiders, you know, cameras. I'm not even going to presume to recommend a camera for you because they are such personal pieces of equipment. People have very strong opinions as to what they want, you know, filter wheels and cabling and adapters and software. You could easily wind up spending another $10,000 on your rig. Okay, so for the one scope collection, this one's pretty easy too. Let's just go with a Celestron C8 on a CGEM2 mount. 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain is the quintessential all purpose telescope. It'll do a little bit of everything. CGEM mount is the one we mentioned it before. You could put it on a slightly less expensive AVX mount. I'm not going to fault you for that. If you like your mounts from different suppliers, the CGEM is also available as an Atlas if you're an Orion person. It's an EQ6 if you're a Skywatcher person. Because we're already in the Celestron world, I'll just go ahead and pick the CGEM just to make things simple. Next up, we have the guy who's too cool for the room. He's too cool for you. He's too cool for me. He's driving around in a 1996 Saab station wagon because it's the best car ever built. This guy isn't going to be caught dead with an 8-inch Metcassegrain. He's not going to be caught dead with an 8-inch Dobsonian. He has to have something that nobody else has. I'm going to choose the Vixen VC200L. That's the Vixen 6th order aspheric Cassegrain. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows. And you know what? That's the way this guy likes it. So when somebody walks up to him and says, what is this thing? He's going to spend the next 20 minutes explaining to you, after which you still aren't really going to understand what he said. And for the mount, I'm going to pick for the new Sphinx mount. And this one's available under many different part numbers, depending on what part of the world you live in. But the new one, I think, is called an SX2 Sphinx model number two. I played with Sphinx model number one, and I can tell you the product is very well named because I could not figure that thing out. I had the manual open the whole time. Things don't make any sense. And of course, again, that's the way this guy likes it. So let's say you're a true hipster. The guy I mentioned before with the Vixen, that's just too common because people have at least heard of Vixen products. Let's say you really want to go get something that you're sure nobody else has. If you're that person, try this a DGM off-axis Newtonian built by Dan McShane. I reviewed some of these for scope reviews before, but if you're not familiar with the concept, a lot of people with a big Newtonian will often build a sub-aperture mask. The idea being that you can increase the effective focal length, make the aperture smaller so that it's not affected by seeing, and you can also do it in between the spider veins so that you're not getting any diffraction from the spider. Since we're only using a piece of the mirror, let's just cut out that piece of it and use it for one telescope. As a result, one parent mirror can give birth to as many as three or four telescopes. The disadvantage of this is you've got a long tube. It's skinny, but it's going to retain the same focal length. And the secondary is actually going to be mounted at the corner at the edge of the tube. Collimation, very challenging, but of course, that's the way this guy likes it. So if you go to DGM's website, it appears that he's mainly interested in filters these days, but the website doesn't specifically say he's not making telescopes. So again, this is going to be very appealing to the true hipster. If you're really looking for something that nobody else has, try one of these. So the next personality is the Luddite. 
This is the person who hates technology. This is the opposite of the astrophotographer. In fact, in the observing field, you'll often see this person setting up on the other side of the field of the astrophotographer. And the reason is, at some point in the evening, the astrophotography rig is going to act up in some way. Something is going to not work. The Wi-Fi connectivity, cabling, software, ASCOM protocol, something is going to fail, which by the way, it inevitably does, and he just doesn't want to hear about it. So for this person, I'm going to pick for them the good old Orion X-T8. It's an 8-inch Dobsonian that I've recommended so many times on this channel. And again, the market's changed quite a bit in the past couple of years. Prices have gone up, models have changed names, and this one has gone up to about $600, but it's still a really good buy. You're really not going to do much better here. The only thing the Luddite is not going to like about this telescope is that some of them come with red dot reflex sights, which require batteries, and that's a no-no. So if you're this person, take the red reflex sight out and put a traditional optical finder in. So again, I have the Orion, but you can choose any of the competing equivalent models from people like Skywatcher, Apertura, Zoomel, and many others, depending on what part of the world you happen to live in. And finally, we have three on a budget. In a way, this is very similar to the first category we talked about, somebody who wants to cover all their bases, but this is a person who doesn't want to spend a lot of money. So we're going to base this collection on the good old 8-inch Dobsonian. Again, I have the Orion, but you can pick the one that you like. Good general all-purpose telescope. Again, prices have gone up, but still a great bargain at what they're asking for it right now. So for the second scope in this collection, I'm going to pick the Celestron Nexstar 5SE. Good general purpose all-around telescope, and it's got tracking, and it's got go-to if you're in the mood. So for the refractor, we can't leave out the refractor. I'm going to pick an Astrotech AT72ED. They're up to version number two. If you can find a version number one at a good price, by all means, pick one up. I think this is becoming one of my favorite low-cost refractors of all time. It'll do a little bit of everything, limited only by its aperture. Optics are really sharp. Mechanically, it's strong, and we don't need a mount for it because we've already purchased the Nexstar 5. What you do is you take the schmidt cassegrain off, put the AT72 on, and the scope is short enough that it's not going to interfere with the operation of the telescope. Now, if you had to, you can use this for astrophotography. You can do webcam lunar planetary with the schmidt cassegrain or you can do some deep sky with the AT72. Just be aware, and I've said this many times before, I don't love those next star mounts. I find them to be a little sloppy and the quality control and the pointing accuracy isn't always there, but it does have an auto guider port and the ones I've seen can be raised as if it's up on a wedge. So if you want to try it, by all means, do so. So there you have it, a look at different scopes and scope collections based on your persona. I hope you found this useful. If you have a perfect scope collection, let us know in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.